Today we're gonna do a quick demonstration on an HBV 260 that we fully refurbished for a customer. This thing has been completely, completely redone, and we'll we'll have Harold here showing us all the details, ins and outs of this machine for our customer, Mr. Rod Freeman. What a lot of problems were having for us on the job is somebody with, with that would walk by and you'd be on the wall running with a remote and they come by and hit it and now you're screwed. Yeah. Now you gotta jump off the wall. Yeah. Well, the way I have it now, you can't do it. Okay. Nothing works when you have a remote. Okay. I put a one-way um, diode in it, it doesn't, it doesn't push fluid back or electricity back the other way. Okay, so um, you, you know about how, how they how about how they run as far as the swing? You, you got a 500, right? Yeah. Okay, so. Um, you have a forward gear which makes the panel work neutral nothing works on the panel and then for the remote um, engine hours rpm gauge um, you got three of these e-stop buttons and when you hit them um, you can, it just works off the fuel solenoid so you, so you hear the fuel you're clicking so without it or pressed in you don't hear it anymore it won't start. So when you call me, hey, my, my, I've been trying and it won't start. Well, did you hear the fuel solenoid open up? No. Well, then it's your e-stop. Or a related e-stop issue, meaning the fuse, F2, has blown. Wires have cut together or something's got wet behind one of them. One of them is exposed. This one's in case, this one's in case, but the far one on the other side is, is exposed. So you could, if you got enough mud and dirt in it, or if you pressure wash right in the fucking thing, you, you definitely got to hit okay. you, you definitely short them out. Um, it's a micro clip, so if you leave them out in the sun or dry them out with a hair dryer, they are one of them is. Um, they've got a weather pack in them, they shouldn't, but like I said, if you put a pressure washer right in it, of course, anything's going to get water. Um, and the door can is just the same as your 500, it's 250 ounces on all filters. There's uh, oil in water, I mean, oil in fuel, um, your air filter. Your belt for the air induction and then the uh, hydro <coughs> 250 ounces. Um, we use a Rotella 10W30 full synthetic for diesel. And that's for manufacturer. No 1540. No 1540 is when we go to a, you get a four cylinder turbo. Then you go to the 1540. 1030. Simple synthetic. Right? And then you got a, a, a water separator here. Gonna have to check them periodically. They do collapse when they get cold. You gotta watch that. And that's your first line of defense before it goes up into the main filter. And then there's a, actually there's a pump in here. See, that's a lift pump that's throwing it into the injector. And then from there the cam injects it and builds 20,000 psi and then injects it. So that's your first line of defense. When that collapses, it's cheaper to. You'd be calling us. Change that. Yeah. Two dollars, right? Yeah. yeah. Example, right. <laughs> versus, you know, $30 filter and then $150 pump. He was told that these are gasoline mostly, not necessarily diesel. Um, they work on both. They're, yeah. they're, they're universal, correct. The other ones they got are kind of, it's kind of got like a plastic Screen. housing in the inside. It's about the same size. Correct. But on the inside, it's got like a, a plastic housing with like a real plastic screen. Well, that's $10. Ten dollars a tube, and ours only. It may be. Yeah, so. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We got to keep our costs down now. Yeah, 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 the whole Cadillac now. Right. <laughs> but you know, it's like I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. About uh, about two hundred and fifty hours, and I, I changed it a whole lot of it. Yeah. Um, man, I've seen these filters the last five years. If you keep the tank clean, you know, I mean, they're they're the low part of the tank, keep the water out. So yeah. as long as you keep the tank clean, hell, you know, you're hardly using the filter then, you know. Um. The, the problem is when the guy fills the tanker up at, at the gas station, you know, he kicks the lid open, hey, what's in there? You know, the dirt goes right down in there with it. That's, what, that's where you get the contaminant. Yeah. yeah, he keeps a box for the filters on the truck. So, mm, okay. can, uh, um, a lot of guys don't even run them at all. They just run right to the filter, you know. Uh, I don't like doing that. I like to see it, you know what I mean? I, 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 you know about what, the status of your fuel tank from there, you know what I mean? That's all that's doing it for me. Yeah. Um, so you got your simple pigtail in the front, just a seven pole. RV connector, um, change, and you got your breakaway switch. The way if the machine gets loose, it applies the brakes. You know, it'll put it into a tailspin. Probably flip it over, but at least you won't hit nobody. You know what I mean? 
I'd rather damage the pump than yeah, you know, kill get, somebody. get implicated in a lawsuit. Yeah, definitely. Tear you up. Especially around here. I mean, I don't know, you remember Apex? Country Company? I think I've seen that. Yeah, that's what closed them down. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Snagged a lady through the toll booth. I guess she was handing out the money and it went through and the pump got loose and threw into the toll booth and God. killed her, I think. Oh. Yeah, put the whole company out of business. I think they had, I think that's where Matt come at. They had 50 units at once. One time, running 50 trailer pumps. 50? Yeah. 5 zero. Yeah. Holy yeah, crap. A shitload of them. They dominated Orlando. They dominated <clears throat> but I took them out. Just that one one incident, no breakaway switch. Well, we got a hold of them and oh fuck. I think, man, I don't even, that guy even worked today. I heard he, he, he couldn't work because every dollar, dollar he made, he had to send it to his lady. The owner. <clears throat> so, anyways, um, just make sure the switch works. <laughs> you see the wires pulled out or something like yeah. that. Um, now, you can, um, I noticed over the years, you have ups. You drag your hose out and it hits it and knocks it loose or it, it plugs in here so if you see it out you're gonna be driving you're gonna feel it pulling you back you know you know the brakes are applied you just step back in <clears throat> if not you'll have to cut it it's, you know and then make it to your house and get another one they sell them at napa are pretty readily available um you go through us same place i buy the trailer stuff you know actually i think i've seen on the 500 i think it just got it got cut i think i've seen you it got just, cut? yeah that's the a big no-no the lawyer catches oh, yeah. Especially they're gonna pull you in court and say, "Did you ever see that?" You say, "Uh, I don't think so." And then when your workers say, "Yeah, he told me about it last week." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Makes it worse when Judge, you know about it. Come on over here and get behind my desk. I'm gonna show you something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tear your ass up. You know about it? Don't think it. Makes it worse. <laughs> it makes it worse. Oh my lord. <laughs> okay, so um, just like on the 500, there's directional controls, and then you know as the cylinder gets down, there's a point uh, pilot pressure, which is about five bar, and it tells the cylinder to do next in line. You know what I mean? Through an MPF, a multi port sensor and all these lines will lead to S1 and S2 and the, that's the brain of it so it tells it which direction to go you know when one's gone this one's going to be all the way back if it isn't it make you'll hear the machine pause for a second because it's bringing the other one back and when they meet together then they switch boom, boom, boom. they must meet if it doesn't um, a check valve is probably opened up and you're losing uh, return oil because every time this thing is switching back and forth it's keeping the same oil in itself that's the reason why the line. So as one's pushing, the other, the oil is forcing the other one up. up you understand? When it's that, loop oil. That's right. When the check oil, uh, valve goes bad, it's returning it back to tank instead. So that could be a problem. And I don't know if you've ever had a 500 that did that. That would no, that'd be the culprit usually. It's a one-way check valve. That. And now the machine has to generate the loop oil instead of add to it. And what, uh, which part was there was off of a 750? Okay, so uh, so what I was telling you on um, the first time you came, yeah, this is a real rarity. They're, they um, Schwing only put about three of them out in, in the world on, on this one, on these two sixty, um, because it has an internal soft switch. Soft switch. Um, most of them, if you look at this guy Tillman's five hundred, the remote. Does your five hundred have one now? That, that lever. I got a. I'm not sure. I got manually, or remotely, is done here. See the box up here? Yeah. And that was okay. So that was Schwing's answer. That keeps the spike pressure off of the end cylinder. I'll tell you what happens when you don't have it. I'm sure you've seen this on the job before. These things open up, and it'll dump the whole tank. And that kept the spike pressure off the back of the cylinder. See where he's welded it? That's all that soft switch done. Is it kept when that piston rolled down there at 200 bar? Slam! Bam! That kept the the spike pressure because when it slammed you might exceed 600 bar at the point you know not not for very long a half a millisecond but it was, a, it was 600 bar so that's what kept the pressure off that so now this design incorporated in it it just got too cost effective for showing the handle um this was a, a one-off they put them on there and it, and it worked great but then the bean counter at the other end said no we can't do that it's going to cost us that much more money now that it makes the machine five thousand dollars more nobody's going to pay for it so they remotely, because that system that you see there is about 1200 bucks. So this is a real rarity. The same brain is just a smaller on a 750. Correct. It's real good, they're real effective. That brain was made for a pump. It wasn't you know, confiscated like oil in, or oil in or reed off of a hand valve off of a loader. That was made for a concrete pump. You know? An engineer from uh, Germany made it. So that thing would last probably longer than the machine will, trust me. Mm -hmm. 
So um, you, you've got your um, flow control, and then just like a water valve, you screw it in, slows the water down, or the oil, screw it out, speeds the water up, or the oil. And just like on your 500, same tech, it's just a little bigger. Because um, on a 500, um, this one's working off the pump. On a 500, it's remotely done. That means um, on a 500, you're, you're screwing it in, and it, it, it tells oil now to tell the pump to move the swash plate to 80%, 100%, 20%. Well, this is doing it internally, off the pump. Um, we had a gentleman with a Mako that had a cracked one. That was the downfall of it. <clears throat> These are a little bit more expensive, but they're more effective. They're instantaneous, whereas a 500, sometimes they get stuck. You, you turn it down, you're like, man, the thing's not doing it. And all of a sudden, it slows down. Yeah. That's the first sign your old bad then, if the swash plate gets stuck. Um, so your soft switch here, um, it's in the normal operating position. When you switch it over and turn it offline, then, then it hits harder. Um, it was it was designed to let you have the flexibility of pumping through a tough mix, and then when that truck leaves, you switch it back into normal and, and keep on, you know. So the that's next truck right there. That's normal operation, correct? And it swings all the way the other way to. When you cut it off, for, uh, mm -hmm. cut it off, and that takes off line. You'll hear it. You'll hear it definitely make the definite noise. Boom, boom. I mean, it really gets loud. Mm -hmm. Is that the one you told me not to run. Yep, not to run it all the time like that. Yeah, Otherwise, you'll you'll eventually have that. Yeah, then you'll be back here. And the pump. <laughs> moving 36 liters a minute yeah. dump the whole tank in a half a second and you'll shoot it 2,000 feet in the air you're like whoa it's a geyser by the time you turn it off that's it you're done you dump the whole tank a geyser <laughs> <laughs> you don't know if you salute it or what it'll be a, right. it'll be great beautiful on the job yeah, yeah. Well. driver you'll be covered man oh shit it'll be beautiful <laughs> so you got three stops <laughs> and then there's a manual lever here um, on the other side I'm going to show you Yeah, I see it over that. there. Mm -hmm. That's um, them. And that just for me, um, what that does is um, it tells the S1 and S3, I don't know what to do next. So it's just a, a, a directional cutoff. So so when this piston comes up, it's shooting pallet oil to that valve. I turn the valve off, the machine doesn't know what to do next. So it sits there and holds pressure. So I can test each side <coughs> of the piston. I can test the rod side and the piston side. I can test for leaks. I can manually, if you push that in, it'll come forward manually. Okay. You need to hold it, mind you, but manually you push it in with a nail, a little screwdriver, it'll pump. That's good so, to know. On my uh, TK25, the same thing kind of on top of the engine. There's a little knob. They correct. Can run it. Correct. Um, okay. In fact, there's a conversion for a food spicer. You go up to a, 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 a food spicer. You need to hook up all these, and then this is your button. So you gotta hook this to the battery. It's a big process because electrically, food is running because they use proximity switches. So you gotta hook all this shit up. That's not a new one. Well, from about 2008, no. You gotta put this on now. And that one costs you, I think those are, I don't remember, like 300 bucks or more. But whereas Schwing, so that, that's what that pigtail that you see, that's what you're energizing is that coil that grabs the spool back. So naturally, it's in the off position. When you push it up, it adds power to the coil. <clears throat> That's what you're doing. So if you have some problems with the board, you can run it. Back. You're gonna always run it. Yeah. If the coil, if the coil short, went to short, right? It would blow the fuse first, and then you, you took the fuse off. You stuck a new one in there, blew it again. Then you know it's, the coil is bad. Yeah. Manually. Day right there. Boom. Yeah. Two minutes later, you're pumping again. You know the contract. You get that lease to get that truck off. And you can call somebody. Hey, man, I need a coal out here. Yeah. Or you know, but manually you can you can get yourself out of a pine. Whereas the boost master, when they go down, they go down hard, brother. You know, <laughs> they go down real hard. It, it's electrically. If you've got an electrical problem, they go down hard. So that, that was the whole premise. Keep it simple. Manually you can get yourself out of a pinch. So you know, but it's a foreign ship. You know, you know, it's a pinch. I, I, I love I love foods. You know, they they got a, they got an interesting design. But, you know, some things I don't. You know, if you could put the two pumps and marry them together, well, man, you jam up. Man. Um, the S2 is, is a good design. I mean, if you notice Schwing in, in the last year, their, S, their rock valve has turned into an S2. Yeah. I, I don't know if you've seen the new foot pumps. They have. It's called a long rod. It's an S. You know? And 305 is already using an S. So it, it's a good platform. You know, whereas a, a rock valve, you've got that. Um, well, it concrete's coming out, and it's hitting, and then rolling into the hole. So, you know, I mean, there's, there's a deflection there. When that thing switch over, it, you know, it squeezes in the hole. Whereas an S-tube, it's a one-shot, whoop, right into the cylinder. So, you know, it, it, it's effective, but it's an old design. So, the two spice was got on that. The rest of it is swing. That's what people say on the uh, 
once my first, the wear plates and stuff are a little bit better, last a little longer. It depends on if you get carbide or not. A, a lot of food plants are sold in the United States already have carbide on them. Whereas these, you can get fuel steel and the price is a little bit cheaper. These are 300 bucks, carbide, might already a thousand bucks. Double the life, but... Now, I'd say to you, if you're running this machine yourself, I'd get carbide. Because you're always on the machine, and the chance of you having a problem and destroying this carbide is less. But on a fleet of 20 guys, each guy runs a different machine every day, you don't know who to blame. And now you've wasted your money. Whereas you run fuel steel, let them blow it up in 3,000 yards and replace it. Because a good mechanic can change out in a day last end. A good mechanic, if he doesn't have to do anything else, you know, just three pieces, he can do it today. But, you know, it's the piston cops and the wear seal and the wear ring and everything, the intermittent ring <coughs> that bogs you down. So, I mean, that's something to think about. But, they're, like I said, they're double the money, too. So, um, I, in my mind, uh, swing is less and easier to fix versus food spicer, but you get double the life. But they're a little bit harder because on an S2, you got to take the back bearing out, you take the nose bearing off, and you squeeze the S-tube out and lift it out. Replace it, put it back in, and shove it in. Whereas this one, I've got two rods. I just screw in the back of the housing, slide the housing back, and replace everything. Slide the housing back up, boom, I'm ready to go. But they're, you know, like I said, they're cheaper, but they're easier to fix, too. So they can get hits. It's a trade-off, you know, what, what would you rather have? Um, because it's a direct dive, the cooler is here on the back, running through the main drive pump. So if you variable, variable the engine speed, then you variable your cooling and cleaning capability. So you must always run the engine about 21 to 22.5 100 RPM, you know what I mean? <clears throat> so um, what it's doing here is if you look, it's running through the cooler, the pump, so you run through the cooler, from out of the cooler to the filter, and then you see the loop line, boom, right back into the tank. And that's doing it 30 liters a minute. So every five minutes, it's taking all the oil out and cleaning it and putting it right back in, in theory. So you must keep the engine running at top speed. If you don't, you lessen your cooling capacity. A lot of them old timers, you know, you get around 60, 70 year old guy, pump guys. Oh, no, no, turn on your Put the volume all the way up and turn the engine down. You got the same effect. No, you don't. Mm -mm. You're going to burn <laughs> the pump too. That's right. There's only a two degrees drop in the cooler. You go in at 90 and you come out at 88, always. So if you if you keep it and you're running 300 feet, you're adding, say you're you're putting in four degrees, well, you're still got a, a negative of two. You're two degrees all day long, every minute. You just say, all day long, you're gonna climb real quick. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so you keep the heat off of you, run the engine all flat out, always. Um, you get a simple uh, gauge here, a red meaning the lowest and black meaning the highest. Um, as long as you leave it about somewhere, no less than the middle, but in a quarter or right to the gauge, because you, you do have that much room to expand. When the oil gets hot, it does expand a little bit. Usually it expands about two inches. So, correct, correct. Because you can see, if you look in here, you see where the suction lines are? <laughs> it's almost halfway through the tank. So you're sucking air now. And on a hydraulic system, that's bad, really bad. Yeah, sucking air. You'll burn a pump quick. Because it's not only using the oil to push, make volume, it's using the lubricant itself too. So you start sucking air and it don't take much. <clears throat> so then you got a simple th thermostat in the center of it. And just run off of mercury. And they go bad once a year, once every other year. You take them off, it's pretty easy. You know what I mean? You, you buy them through Edward, I mean they're 50 bucks or so. I mean, you, if you keep it inside, they'll last for a long time. But when you keep them outside the port of sun, you know, the dog shit up. And uh, anything else that you can That's think of? It. It's operated. They see how she... Your 500 is basically the same, uh, other than you don't have the ass-end moving part. Yeah. Um, but it's the same, configured the same. Um, just the uh, S1 and S2 is a little different. You know, you, you've got the forward control here. Um, see on the 500 right there? Yeah. It, whereas yours is on the very back. That's all. It's just a different configuration, but it works the same. It's telling S1 and 2 what to do. Well, that is your F1 and F2. You know what I mean? And that's controlling that, that stand-up stack. So it's the same theory, it's just in a different package, you know what I mean? Um, this is more effective, and that's the reason why they use them on bigger pumps, a lot more effective. They use them on boom pumps. 
it's a lot more effective way of moving oil. Um, it, there's no loss of power versus those. There's, a, there's I think there's a three percent drop. So like a transmission, there's a fifteen percent drop. You know, when you put if you have three hundred horses, by the time you get to the end, it's a little bit less because you've got the, the draw in between. Well, this is a more efficient way. So there's not less. Uh, in theory, it, it, it would, this one would pump harder than a regular two sixty. You know, you, you, it might not be much. It might only be two two yards more now, but it's still it's effective. It's all down there. Yeah. Put it on hard stroke. You look at the difference when you do hard stroke. There we go. We're running for about 15 minutes. Since the machine can do 40, 50 yards an hour, in 15 minutes, in 30, you can do 15 yards. So that's what we run running at. Um, in one yard, you can find out how that or not. You know what I mean? Uh, don't take no one stroke and there's oil on the ground. You know what I mean? So after 15 minutes of us running. Have you operated a 260 before? Normally, what do you think it can unload a truck? TK45 and it would do one in about 10 minutes. So this one you could probably do maybe in six and a half. That's a, that, no, that's a nine inch slump yeah. with about 100 foot. It, it, I mean, it'll, it, you, you couldn't have two guys holding in the hose. It'll knock them down. Oh. Foot. oh, hell yeah. It'd be like a fucking cobra. <laughs> <laughs> I actually did one one time and got knocked out of the swimming pool. Oh, no. They're, they're working the 500, trust me. Oh, yeah. It's way too powerful. It's all about, you know, in pumping, it's all about moving how fast you move oil. You know? But there's a conversion. Um, we set the pump at 100 and 100 bar. After you go to 100 bar, it converts now. And you don't want pressure on volume oil, so it converts. So you're going to call me um, and say, Harold, I'm only getting 13 strokes a minute. I said, well, are you past 100 bar? Yeah, well, the pump now is converting, so you're not going to get 24 strokes a minute like you should be. It's got to stay below 80 bar. Before you get them stroke. Regulate. Yeah. When Schwing gives you that calculation, is they're pumping direct water like we're doing. Oh, okay. It's it's a, it's got a little bit of a sand in it, but it's mostly water. It's on a, it's a hydro machine. It's a big wheel that turns itself, <clears throat> and that's how they're getting your regulation, and that's how they give you your strokes per minute. Now you can up them and close, and close them, um, but I tell a lot of guys um, the reason why you're not buying a 160 or even if they made a 60 is because you're going to be doing the same amount of jobs, but you're running the machine at 100 percent all the time. That means the machine ain't gonna last too long. The bigger machine you got, the smaller percentage you're going to be using. And this, you're only going to be using 25 percent of the machine. Oh, it'll last you forever. So the, the reason why they left you at 23 strokes per minute is because you, the machine's only running at 40 percent. Can we even all maxed out? It's only running at 40 percent. Can we show them how the remote control works? How to operate it properly and stuff? Out of 500, you're not gonna have Ford or Reverse or you know anything like that. 
Um, you just a, a, a basic function. Down. Turn the remote on. You hear how you box the engine down? Oh. Not all the way up. Simple control. Flip it over, get the pressure off. Swing your line out. No reverse. Not on a ball out. You would do you no good if you had it. So if if the receiver's not on with it down, it won't start just like your big tail. If you have it out, it won't start. Same same thing. All that's doing is just operating the the e stop. That's all that's doing. You hear no click. The same with if you if you don't have this on and you, you have it in remote, it's not going to click. If you have if you have it up, they're clicking. Same effect. Correct. The remote must be on for you to put it in remote, or the safety kicks off. So just keep that in mind. Or have it neutral, and then you can start it. And then turn this on, and then turn it down. You have a little. I just need the protection for you, so like I said, somebody come by and turn it on. Hey man, what's this button for? You're on the wall. Ah! <laughs> you know, you knock three people off of it, yeah. blow the cell out. <laughs> so, just a protection. Um, it's a, a Rimtron is a multi signal uh, channel, so every time you use it, it's throwing a new signal out. So, it's a random million codes. And, no more, you don't get too much interference from a cell phone or a 900 megahertz walkie talkie anymore. If you got the airport, there's some, sometimes, if you're, if you're using those big jumbo jets, you do get some, but on the basis you won't because it's randomly you always going to an extra code. You always going to an extra code. Um, if you look up. It will go through a couple of walls, and if you're two floors down, it'll go. It'll go. It, it, it ain't gonna go through four or five. You know, if you're going 300 or four, 500 feet inside of a Pentagon building, no, it ain't gonna go. You know, with six-inch walls, no. But it'll go through. It's it's a it, it's a variable um, code, so it goes through it's like 900 meters. It'll go through a couple of good walls. You know, if you're down in the basement or something. The range are pretty good. Um, uh, Omnix and Remtron are on the forefront of. Technology, so there's no there's nothing really better on the market right now. I mean, they pretty much dominate, so they got a, they got a good system. Um, uh, unfortunately, a Remtron doesn't have an internal antenna, so if the antenna goes bad, you're, gonna, you're not going to make it far 10 feet, 20 feet, and then you're going to use it. And then as soon as you walk away, it dumps. What will happen is the pump will stop. You know, you've lost signal between the two. You'll be out 500 feet, and all of a sudden it'll just stop. You go back there, and you see the engine still running. I know I lost signal. You get back a little bit, and then you know. I don't know if you're ever going to be 500 feet, but something I've even seen 1,000 feet. It just depends on the yeah. certain conditions are right. Um, uh, whereas an Omnix has an internal antenna, and that works for about 100 feet, and then you need to go farther than that. So they're a little bit different with theory. But um, Remtron's pretty close to the top. I mean, there ain't nothing too close. I mean, that was made for a pump, and a lot of these systems were made, like the one you have. They were made for cranes and excavators, stuff like that. So they put a bunch of buttons on there and just kind of incorporate it. This was made for This is good. Any, anything else that you got off the top of your head? We do have a thousand videos on YouTube. And yeah, no, I've seen them before. I watch you guys on there a lot. So. Appreciate that. Yeah. the 500 units.
<laughs> Swinging the shovel around like Troy. <laughs> <laughs> the material cylinders, um, they, they do uh, like a 500, it's, they're the same size. Um, just, they should be at 30 to 10,000 yards. Uh, a lot less on that one, you know. You get a piece of rebar in there, sucked in from a mixer driver. Who knows? You leave a piece of concrete there and you try to break on through, I mean, that's real fun. So, you know, just, it, it, there's a lot of variables. So, on the, on the basis, you should get about 10,000. But, you know, you get three, you get a lot of them. We try, we try to minimize the risk of it breaking, you know, that's our job, but uh, regardless, there's always something that's going to happen. There's always either a leak or a little something there, but we always try, to, and, and in that, in that, in that uh, fashion, we also help you out, like if something is, if the machine is acting up, acting up or whatever, you can just bring it on over and we'll, we'll take a look at it. Now, two years later, the machine starts acting up, <laughs> don't blame us, you already... <laughs> Five you own it thing. I mean, <laughs> we have seen that before where guys, 12 months, 10 months down the line, hey, this machine ain't working right. Well, you never grease the damn thing. Huh? You want it to work properly. No, you it's leaking all, it's yeah, leaking yeah, all, it's leaking. We've seen him bad in, in a couple of months. This guy want to work you for me. Hey, that, that thing was brand new. Yeah, I could pull shit. <laughs> Burn that thing up, brother. <laughs> that thing looks like you've been gnawing on it. <laughs> but um, uh, before I go, um, the reason why Schwing, in my mind, is so great is he doesn't need electricity. I think it will, in theory, if you lost the alternator or some solar battery, you got it started. Um, you can get your truck back around, you can do your truck back on it. Um, it, it. You see here on the forward reversing valve, you push that in, that bullseye, as you can see where I pushed it in before to test it. Don't forget to subscribe. Also, you can go to our website, liveequipment.com, and you can see a complete list of equipment we have available for sale. Or just keep navigating through this channel. Have a great day.